Hello everyone. In today's video, I am going to discuss about the POMR that is Problem Oriented Medical Record. If you go to any hospital to visit, let's say your relative, he will see a file in his or her bed table. Now that file contains all the medical record of the patient. Now a hospital keeps that record to document the patient's condition which when required can be accessed by authorized medical professional and also help the patient at the time of the follow up. So I am your host Shonglap and today we will together check out what UMR is all about. Okay, let's see some introductory points. POMR was basically defined by Lord and Sweet and it is the official method of record keeping in most of the medical centers across the world. So that is subjective objective assessment and plan of care originates from this POMR. Right? POMR is an organized process of clinical decision making that allows the therapist to systematically plan an effective treatment. Right? So keeping a record is very important. Now we will see what are the steps of POMR? The first is the examination of patient. Then comes your evaluation. Then the diagnosis part. Then the prognosis, plan of care, interventions, goals and predicted outcomes. And lastly, re-examination. We will discuss these steps one by one. Okay, the first point is the examination of the patient. Now, it consists of history taking, systems review and test and measurements. Now, let's talk about history taking. It will provide you valuable information about the disorder and its present state from which you can decide what will be the prognosis and what will be the treatment, right? You need to carefully listen to the patient while you are taking the history and only ask question related to the problem. What is the importance of this history taking, right? It ensures a good rapport and communication between the patient and the therapist. It will help you to determine the type of person, the patient, his or her language, cognitive ability ability to articulate his behavior, injury, a lot of things, right? And most importantly, his or her past medical history, which will give you an idea about the current condition, why the patient is facing that. It may be due to the past medical history. So you need to take history very carefully. Now, from history, examiner can find out any potential red flag signs and symptoms that can help the therapist to find out if any problem is musculoskeletal or a more serious problem that is a chemical right so as an example we can say a persistent constant pain at night with unusual growth and unwanted fatigue with weight loss may be a sign of cancer right yellow flag what is this yellow flag Yellow flag signs are important as it denotes more severe problem and may involve more than one area, right? So what will be the content here? I have already made a video on the assessment format via SOAP protocol. So I will really recommend you guys to please go and check that video, right? Click on the I button to see that video. And in the content here, you can see you need to mention the age, sex, occupation, chief complaint, mechanism of injury, onset of problem, symptoms that bothering the patients, then the location of the pain or other symptoms at the time of onset of problem, 
movements that causing the pain or aggravating the pain, duration and frequency of the symptoms, the pre-medical history with the then assessment. Then comes your part two, that is the review of systems. It is a technique for eliciting a medical history from a patient. It covers the organ systems with a focus upon the subjective symptoms perceived by the patient. Then comes your tests and measures. Superficial tests are performed by the therapist to identify and diagnose the problem. As an example, you can say dry test is done for suspected rupture of cruciate ligament of knee. Okay, now it's time for evaluation, right? So whatever data you have gathered from the in initial examination must then be organized and analyzed, right? Impairments, activity limitations and participation must be analyzed to identify the causal relationships. As an example, you can say shoulder pain in a hemiplegic patient when you're evaluating that pain, you can think or analyze the data which may cause due to hypotonicity that is a decreased tone of that muscles, loss of voluntary movement and trauma from improper transfers, right? Okay, now it's time for diagnosis, right? Uh, medical diagnosis refers to the identification of the disease by evaluating presenting signs, symptoms, history, laboratory test results and procedures. So basically what you have done previously, now you have to take a decision and properly identify the disease by all of the things you have in your hand. And a proper diagnosis is very important. Now prognosis, prognosis of the diagnosis. The term prognosis refers to the predicted, important, predicted. You can predict, but you cannot be sure of that outcome, right? So predicted optimal level of the improvement in function and the amount of time needed to reach that level. Now let's see an example of that prognosis part, right? Suppose a traumatic brain injury patient, what will be the prognosis, right? So it will be determined only at various increments during the course of your rehabilitation. Correct? Okay, now the plan of care. It will be discussed by a group of medical professionals which include your physician, your surgeons, your physiotherapist, your occupational therapist, social counselor and so on. So the plan of care outlines the anticipated patient management. It projects optimal level and time frame for improvement. Now it is a predicted time frame, right? Anything can change. The time frequency and duration of these interventions along with the discharge plans all are discussed in this part, right? Now the interventions. It is defined as the purposeful interaction mainly between the therapist and the patient using therapeutic procedure to produce change in the condition that is betterment of the patient. It is composed of coordination and communication, documentation, patient or client related instructions and procedural interventions needed by the patient. Now goals and expected outcomes. Goal and outcome statement address patient identified priorities and predicted changes in impairments, activity limitations and participation restrictions. Four essential elements of these goals and expected outcomes are first is the individual that is goals are directed mainly on the patient, behavior or activity. It includes changes in impairments, that is range of motion, strength of the muscle, changes in activity limitations, that is transfers, or participation restriction, that is return to work or return to school. Then comes your condition. It specifies the specific conditions or measures 
required for successful achievement then comes your time it determines the period that is needed to achieve the goal now on the basis of time goals can be divided either as a short term goal that is for 2 to 3 weeks and a long term goal which takes greater than 3 weeks now in short term goal a therapist can reach a very minimal amount of change whereas in short term long term goal the change is a drastic one. now after achieving the goal you need to discharge the patient so discharge plan it is initiated early in the rehabilitation process during the data collection phase and intensifies as goals and expected outcomes are close to being reached elements of a discharge plan includes patient family or caregiver education plans for follow up care follow up is very important to keep the patient healthy and if there is any referral to any other agencies instruction to a home exercise plan you need to do some home exercises right and a proper home exercise plan is very important then comes your evaluation or modification of the home environment depending on the patient's condition now you need to do a reexamination before completely discharging the patient it involves continuous reexamination of the patient and a determination of the efficacy of the given treatment if the patient attains the desired level of competence for the stated goals revisions in the plan of care are indicated discharge will be considered then now let's see a flow chart what we have learned here right so first is the examination and after examining the patient if you think this is not your area of expertise you refer the patient to an expert of that area then you need to do a evaluation a proper evaluation again in evaluation if you think the patient needs a referral then you will do that then comes your diagnosis part then prognosis and plan of care after that intervention now in intervention if you think some intervention you cannot give to the patient you refer again to a specialist and then the outcomes now in all of the cases from evaluation to the outcome you need to do a reexamination after a certain period of time so this concludes our POMR that is problem oriented medical record now if you have noticed or checked the video from the first you might have noticed that i in some places focus on the physiotherapy aspects of the POMR so when you are writing this question in your paper you need to focus right also in the physiotherapy aspect so i have made this note according to that okay so thank you for watching the video till the end please like share and subscribe to my channel and also press the bell icon you can also join my telegram channel to get all the notes and book pdfs so do that too see you in the next video